Hi everybody, this is Mike Kelly from animatorsforum.com and uh, your, I'm, what I'm going to show you today is uh, some one of the new features of Animator Studio version 9 Pro. It's only available in the Pro version, which is reason alone for you to run out and upgrade to Pro if you don't already own Pro. And this feature alone is reason to own 9, even if you uh, have been on the fence about upgrading in the past. Uh, let's put it this way. If you're an animator and you, and you have any characters in your animation and any of your characters have any arms or legs, you're going to want this upgrade. Um, however, if, if that doesn't apply to you, then you don't need to worry about it. But I'm going to show you, and you're going to see a lot of videos about all the wonderful new features. And there are a lot of things about 9 that are worth having. To my mind, this is the most important feature of Nine, um, and I'm going to show it to you. It's called Smart Bones. What you're going to see about Smart Bones is that it can do a lot more than what I'm going to show you. It can do some spectacular things, and people far cleverer than I am are doing things with that, and you're going to see those videos. You're also going to see the other end of it, people doing a lot of bulging arms, and uh, there's a middle ground in there, which is namely how to use it in every day-to-day -day sort of uh, joints, arms, legs, and, and bodies. And I, what I want to show you is the difference it makes. And I think once you see this difference, you'll realize that you can't do without it. So, so here we have on the screen, uh, let me get to uh, this, you know, the focus here. We have uh, two of my characters, actually one of my characters, uh, twice he's done is the original, the original model, the old version. Uh, when I say old version, he actually was, um, uh, he went through a lot of iterations. Oh, and I should, I should notice, uh, note parenthetically that I'm not the greatest artist in the world, and I may not even be close to the, the best rigor in the world. So whatever you see here, if it's even halfway decent, you're going to be able to do it 10 times better. So this should show you that if I can do it, you'll do it better. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to say this is the absolute best work in the world, nor is this the best way to rig things, but this should show you the differences dramatically between the two versions. So, so here we have the original version. Like I said, he's gone through a lot of different versions. I think we were up to version uh, 13 on him in different rigs. And not all about to do with rigging arms and legs. A lot of it was parts in his body, like the facial features. But certainly a lot of it was trying to get the perfect rig. In this particular version, if we open this up and explore it, you'll see that um, he has a lot of layers. We're using patch layers here for... Uh, for, to um, attempt to overcome the problem, which we always have, of joint. And uh, so he, uh, it uses a ton of layers in order to get that. That's the, one of the main disadvantages of patch layers is that they, you need a lot of patch layers, not only to put patches on, but sometimes to take them off so they don't interfere with other things, as you'll see sooner. So that's, that's how he looks now. Uh, the new version, using smart bones, you can see that uh, here we have a lot fewer layers. As a matter of fact, I think there's 11 layers here. And if we go back to this version, we have a lot. Uh, I don't know, I think there's 20 more, 22, 23. But anyway, there's a, there's a lot of layers here. So a lot more layers, a lot more complicated to get the exact same rig. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go through and, and see how this works. So if I go to um, Bones of the original, this is the original version, and you'll see both of them move at the same time because I'm doing the same things in both of them. So we're gonna just look at the arm motion to begin with. So if I zoom in here and we move this, you'll see that as the arms rotate, you'll see how the two versions uh, behave. And the first thing you'll notice is, I hope you'll notice is that the, actually, let me go back here and do this. Let me go back and do this first. Click on this so we don't get the bones in the picture. You don't really need to see the bones. You can see as this rotates that you have a much cleaner line here. You have this line uh, going through here, which uh, you're going to see all the mail messages I have. Uh, okay. the, uh, you have this nice line that sets up here that holds in here, whereas this, because of the patch layer, making this patch here isn't nearly as clean. Um, and as we go out, you can see that that line can can come and go as you want. You'll also see that as we go up here, 
that the uh, joins here at the top here join this there's a little bump here this joins not perfect once again if I altered this uh, in a better rig it would look better here but then it wouldn't look as good in, in other positions so those are the trade-offs I had to make in the past <clears throat> excuse me I'm covering from a cold here about trying to uh, make the perfect rig also I should note too that when you're when you're animating these things you can fix all of these things by moving the verts around in other words if you move the arm up here and you see this little bump here to get it to look nice and straight like this, you can just move the verts, uh, the point, we call them points in, in Anime Studio. I'm coming from a 3D background, we call them verts, but uh, you can move the points around and smooth out and change the curvature there, and then it would look just like this. But this is all done automatically. Smart Bones automatically handles that moving of those points and the curvature. So I don't have to think about it every time I move his arm up in the air to move the points out uh, around there. And that's that's really the beauty of it. So anything you can do by moving points and curvatures on your own, you can program automatically in the smart bones. So anyway, so that's uh, that's that smooth movement there. And I think you can see as his, as his arm finally extends to the full range of the motion, then we have this nice smooth join in here and this nice, which we do not have the same, the same sort of smoothness here. If we zoom in, you'll see that there's this, this bump here and there's a smoothness here. And anything that isn't perfectly smooth, there might be a little tiny bump here. It once again is due to my uh, not greatness in rigging, or if I just don't care. Sometimes I don't care if it's there's a tiny little imperfection that won't get seen. This would get seen on screen. This little tiny little bump wouldn't. So, so those are the arms, uh, the arm shoulder motion, I should say. And now we're going to go to the classic. Oh, that's the arm in reverse motion. I just wanted you to show it goes both directions, so you can do the. Reverse motions, and once again, you have a little bit of crap here that we don't have a nice smooth line there. And move up there, and as we move up, you see you get this here. You don't get that. You get a nice even join there. So, so that's that. So, anyway, now we come back down to the regular thing. Now we're going to see a, uh, a forearm bending, which is the bicep. And you can see, as the biceps bend, you can see a slight... I do a slight thickening here. I don't do this... Uh, this craziness and people are going to get into these bulging biceps all the time. I'm not doing that, but I'm doing enough to make it look natural. So you can, you can see a nice natural bulge there, which you can, of course, get with patch layers. So I'm doing that. Now, my arms, uh, because I use the same arm position uh, and, and on the same arm to, uh, it's kind of cross-staging directions. In other words, if you're if you can imagine this, this arm is on a level plane and, and I'm looking out at you, the arm might come out forward to you and this hand position would change and then I would be I would have my arm like waving in for, at you so I don't want you to think it looks strange because of the palm position but it's really a natural position for it to come out all the way over here even though we can't keep our hand in that same position do let's just see a couple things on the patch layer side you see if we move in here you'll see the patch layer actually occludes the hand switch layer that I have in order to get this not to do this I'd have to put another still yet another layer even within all these other uh, hundreds of layers that I'd have. I have to put still another layer to unpatch that, which I never got around to doing because I was just too lazy. And uh, But it's still another problem with patch layers, that they will patch out things that are on top of them. Um, that's the whole point of them. And so here we don't have that problem here. Obviously, we don't, we don't have that patch layer problem issue. And it's much smoother, as you see. So, anyway, that's that. Next thing I do, I think... Let's see what we do next. <laughs> Remember what I programmed in here is oh yeah, do his leg leg movement. Okay, so legs. If you come back here, you'll see. What you like to have in cartoons is you have, like to have this nice crotch. And in the new version, I have a little crotch line here. I don't have a crotch line. I've experimented in the past with all kinds of workarounds for this. I've never found anything that really works really well. I've had patch layers in the crotch, and sounds like a condition yes I've had patch layers in my crotch and I hope that you haven't had that too but now there's a miracle aid for it anyway I've, I've, I've done all kinds of things to try to get this nice crouch line but now with smart bones not only can I get it, but look how nicely that deforms on that side here you've got sort of this this is the sort of attempt to get this little crotch line but it isn't anywhere near as nice as this plus we have this little bit of business up here cutting into his to his leg here into his uh, torso there so if you come up through here you see that it's cutting in. So anyway, on the smart bone side, much nicer, 
nice line doesn't doesn't cut into that at all so anyway so that's that so then oh then the last uh, thing i'm doing here is is doing a shoulder movement so as you can see i'm bringing the shoulder up and in this shoulder the collar disappears because that's uh the, the collar is i think a patch layer is coming over on top of that collar and it's getting distorted in a weird way anyway but on the other side where i've got the ability to use smart bones the the shoulder comes up very naturally so that comes up much nicer and i can control completely the deformity of that now i'm going to bend forward and the first thing you're going to notice when it bends forward is that this that he comes kind of disconnected from the bottom on this side whereas on this side he actually has a bottom uh, you might say well why didn't you build this better well the problem is i have to build this part of the torso for for these legs to work in that old version of the rigging uh, and yes, I'm sure some of you that are far smarter than I am were, are able to do it a different way. The point is, with smart bones, I don't have to. I can do it my way and still have it look really nice when he bends over. He's actually got a nice bubble butt. Uh, Dingle's kind of a bubble butt kind of guy. And not only can he bend forward, but even more importantly, he can bend back. And you notice as he bends back, this line stays really nice, whereas obviously this is a disaster. But... Uh, once again, I'm able to deform these verts points as we move backwards. So it's a very natural backwards bending movement there. Okay, and then the last thing with Dingle we're going to see is him bending at the waist. And uh, actually, that was bending, bending at the upper torso. So as he, as he leans forward here, you'll, you'll watch this line here, this uh, tummy uh, waistline or breast line. And as he bends forward on the older version, it gets distorted pretty badly. Uh, once again, these are the kinds of things that you can fiddle around, fiddle around till the end of Doomsday with bone strength and trying to adjust. You could add extra bones, you can do all kinds, or you can use smart bones, which handle all that for you automatically. So anyway, so that's that's how uh, how well that works there. All right, now we're going to load in another file. I'm going to load in. Uh, 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 we're loading Ernie. And Ernie, once again, we have an old version and the new version. I'm not going to go through everything with Ernie. We're just going to show you a couple of highlights. Uh, I'll show you first. Ernie's done a little differently. The original Ernie is not done with patch layers. I'm doing him now with uh, those of you that are familiar with them. Let's see if we can look at this ring and see if I can show you this. You see, this is that strange bone rig that does this little. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this before. I'm, I'm not sure who invented this, and I don't want to say because I don't want to give the wrong credit to the wrong people, but it certainly wasn't me. And it's a very clever rig. As this, as this bone bends, uh, these control bones control this other point, which separate out and get you actually pretty close to getting a good joint. And until smart bones, this was probably as good as it got in terms of, of being able to do an actual joint that moved. Unlike patch layers, which can only rotate around, this actually can give you some uh, some bicep bending, as you'll see in a moment. But uh, you'll also see the detriment of it. And you also see how many more layers. This one has a, a lot of layers. This one has, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 layers. And then the new version, this has even fewer layers. It only has nine layers. Very, very compact and constructed. So much cleaner to look at this version if you have to work on it, too. So now we'll, uh, we'll move forward. And the first thing we'll do is the bulging biceps. And you'll notice that on the the old version, even on the old version, the, the arm bulges a little bit on that, which is kind of nice. And that's one reason I liked it better than patch layers is that the arm kind of moved a little more organically. But with smart bones, as you can see, I can make that arm move any way I want, have a bulge out. And some of you might say, well, you know, I kind of prefer the smoothness here. I don't like seeing that crease. Well, then you can do whatever you want. The nice thing about smart bones is whatever you see on screen in terms of, a, of a, a point and a curvature, you can do in a smart bone and have it control that. So uh, so this is the way I like it. So, and there is arm. And now you see the problem with the old version is, as we zoom in here, is that as the crease gets too much, it collapses in on itself. And uh, you might say, well, I could handle that with a constraint, but I actually wanted his arm to bend that far. And in the past, what would happen is if I bent it too far, I would have to go in and adjust the points manually in here, and, and that was a big pain in the butt. So uh, we no longer have to do that because you can control every aspect of the angle bend with smart bones. So don't have that anymore to worry about. And 
now let's come through and here's the leg and once again you can see the crotch uh, I have the uh, I'm gonna keep talking about crotches in these videos but uh, uh, I think you can see that the crotch is uh, much smoother in this particular version I didn't even try to because his he's wearing a t-shirt and these these really aren't uh, one piece um, I, I wasn't trying to unlike Dingle who's wearing the same color on both sides I can't necessarily get away with the same thing but on here I can make it a much smoother bend uh, and it actually looks like a leg would look and this looks very odd <laughs> I don't, and yet this is the rig that I was using for all of our shows up till now uh, or for from the most recent shows so um, and then we move the other leg just to show you the other leg what I like about the other leg is you'll note as this other leg comes up notice his t-shirt gets pushed up by that leg once again that's completely controllable in smart bones so pushes up that and looks really natural as that other leg would move up and then I move his foot just to show you that here there's a it doesn't really look as natural as the adjustment on the foot there you can do anything you want with that so uh, that's that now I'm gonna move his neck and once again I, this this may expose more about what I do or don't do than uh, that I care to admit to but I'm gonna show you the the old version as he moves his neck forward you see he, he uh, it actually starts to come off um, again this is due to the limitations I wanted to have this line be lined up here directly and yet I don't want to have the head below the body because it had one to be on top of the body so there's ways around that but my way around it was just not to worry about it so I don't get the head bend that I want but of course with smart bones I have my cake and I can eat it too uh, which by the way the original expression was eat your cake and have it too obviously if you have your cake you ought to be able to eat it but if you eat it first and then still have it that's the trick and in French it's backwards so um, Eat your cake and have it too. So in this particular case, I can I can have exactly what I want and get that beautiful uh, neck bend that way. And uh, so that's Ernie. So the last thing I want to show you real quick is just so we can get off the you know the distaff side is to show you Amy. And uh, I'm going to only show you two things about Amy. Uh, female characters have. Uh, some unique problems not the least of which is uh, their female characteristics uh, so we have uh, I have Amy bend forward and a female obviously uh, when they bend it's always delightful to us men uh, because uh, various things happen here and I I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to try to sound too sexist as, as Amy bends forward uh, you might want to pay attention to her cleavage here uh, this cleavage actually gets adjusted as she's bent forward so if you if you watch the cleavage um, it's you know so in addition to uh, and, and she's also falling out of her dress on this side so this is kind of what are they what do they used to call that uh, a costume accident or something or an incident I don't know what it was called the Super Bowl anyway the uh, she's a mess here but in here not only is she is she not falling out of her dress here but she is falling out of her dress uh, where it counts so uh, so I think you can see how that works in a very subtle manner and yet looks much more realistic so that's uh, that's in that respect. Now I want to show you the, one of the cool things I really like about uh, about this, and and also now we're going to hit one of the major drawbacks. Well, major drawbacks. Maybe that's too strong a word. One of the one of the downsides of using smart bones, and it isn't something that's that's a downside to keep you from using it. It's something that you need to be aware of when you are using it. Uh, so it so when it occurs, and and it may occur to you that you'll know how to deal with it, or at least you won't be too. Uh, to upset about it and uh, anyway but anyway I'm going to show you this in stages here so in the old version as you notice she raises her leg and her and that's not natural obviously you know, a woman can't raise her leg and her skirt just stay where it was what I would do in the old version is that uh, I would have um, a skirt bone here so you can see there's a skirt bone so as as I raise the leg then then I would adjust that skirt bone move rotate it up but then rotation was not enough so I would also have to kind of transform and move it up and kind of get it to sort of approximate the right position so that was that was better than trying to move the points individually but it was, certainly was still a pain to do um, and the same thing on the on the bottom side you know if I did that that way then I had to rotate that bone in the back and sometimes the bone rotation in the back worked without having to transform it but you can see that that's that's of a uh, really a drag to have to do on the new version don't have to do that anymore on the new version when the bone moves forward you notice 
dress moves forward. And not only does the dress move correctly, but forward up, but it also in the middle comes up higher as it would if it were to be, you know, if you're if you raise your leg and the material goes up there. Same thing on the other side as it raises up. Now notice how that material rises just like just like it would normally. And then this is really amazing. You can do both legs at the same time and notice how the material goes up. And no, it won't go up any higher than that, folks. So those of you that are looking for something else, you can do a Google search and find other things. But um, so there's so there's great. And then just to show you that it can work in reverse, it has to work in reverse because the forward or back legs can also come come forward or back. That makes sense. <laughs> Being redundant, I am still sick. Did I mention that? So you notice this leg, in addition to, to moving the back part of the dress, can also move the front part of the dress, which is how you would want it. However. And here's the, the got you in smart bones that you have to be aware of. Because this moves the front part of the dress, and this bone here also moves the front part of the dress, when two smart bones operate on the same verts at the same time, you get unpredictable results. And here's, as you can see, as this, as this moves forward, ah, look at that dress. Just goes up crazy. See? So... It, and this would happen if she were going to sit down, for example. She'd move both of her legs up, and the skirt would fly up there, and she'd have a wardrobe malfunction. That was it. Uh, even in my sickened state, I remembered wardrobe malfunction. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of smart bones? Does it, well, does it mean you can't use them? No, of course you can use them. And this is a very, uh, uh, this is an example that you're not going to come across with typically with your arms and legs. And this is a, an example with, with the arms and the legs operating on basically a, a, a third object, which in this case is the dress. Uh, there's several ways around this. One of the ways that I've gotten around this is that I have another dress, a duplicate dress I swap in, that's then uh, correctly uh, works on the fact that, that more than one smart bone hits it. Uh, there's also some workarounds that you'll see posted in other various places on the forum. It's not the end of the world. You can, of course, go in and just adjust these verts yourself, and Smart Bones does allow that. You, uh, just because the Smart Bones move the verts doesn't mean that you can't also move them yourself. So even though uh, at this point in time the, the, the verts are being adjusted by Smart Bones, I can also move them too. So I could, I could straighten things out to some degree and, and you know make it make it look and this is you might say well you're back to where you started well yes i am back to to like the old the, the bad old days but it's not terrible because like i say this is a condition or an occurrence or a situation that doesn't occur often and uh it's a small price to pay for the enormous power of smart bones but uh there are there are ways around it so anyway i just wanted to let you know um uh, that's smart bones and basically if you don't have them you're going to want them there's no other way to animate. I would never go back to any other way of doing arms and legs again. Uh, and hope to see you around the forums.